Captain Stay Brony, my friend. Yeah! And remember, Granny Smith loves you. Yep. On camera on your I'm, I'm on camera brushing my mustache. Oh wow. Right now, and you're on talking to me. Hey okay. everybody, how you doing? Welcome. Welcome to the evening edition of Stay Brony My Friends with Tabitha St. Germain. <laughs> oh, we wanted we wanted to do this a little later so we could people on the East Coast could be un, underneath the beautiful night sky that Princess Luna put up there for all of us. Absolutely. <laughs> how are you doing, Tab? I'm awesome. How, are you, how awesome. are you doing? We are doing great around here. It's another beautiful day on the West Coast, San Jose, California. I'm sure it was beautiful up there. Oh, that's so cute. Yay. So uh, you, were, you told me before the show you're swimming with kids in the morning and you were voice acting yeah. with adult kids in the afternoon. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. So, mayhem and mayhem. It was great. Mayhem and mayhem. <laughs> Anything you can tell us you were working on, or is it something new and practical new that we can't talk about? I can't. They scare the pants off me. Mm. You talk things, and then they and I'm frightened. I think that even though I'm sitting here in my own house, yeah. they might come out of the walls or the. <gasps> no, Hasbro yeah. can't do that. Ah, I didn't say it was. I didn't <gasps> say it was a big H, but oh, you know, it was H. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll narrow it down by the end of the show. No. Nope. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> oh, let's get into some questions for you. Um, let's see. Number one. Now, first of all, we're going to go over some of the stuff that you've done. Like, okay. we all know Princess Luna, Nightmare Moon, Rarity, The, the Gravy Boat, uh, <laughs> Photo Finish, the, the, right. our, our favorite, our favorite Mayor Derpy Hooves. Um, yeah. did, did you actually do Mrs. Cake? Because that was on your IMDb. Mrs. Cake, yeah. yes. Did Mrs. Cake? Did you do some Granny Smith? I did a little bit of Granny, Granny Smith. Smith. Yes, and and then of course Pepper Clark on Little Pet Shop. Yes. And you did Martha in all of Martha Speaks. Yes. Yes, awesome show that is too. Um, so in in that wonderful storied career, um, which goes back to all these really great shows. In fact, if you go back further than that, it's Dragon Ball Z, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, Inuyasha. Mobile Suit Gundam, Black Lagoon. Um, yeah. What are your favorite types of characters to play? Good, bad, evil? What are your favorites? Uh, you know, I like everyone. Mm -hmm. I have different moods at different times. Um, I sometimes enjoy being a brat. Sometimes I don't want to hear myself being shrill. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like being a hell hag of some description. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, is I... I like a variety. I basically, my favorite things to do are brand new things, and then I find some new voice, and I'm like, oh, I can't believe that was in the suitcase. Look at that. Look at that. Your suitcase mm -hmm. is full of things. You must have yeah, a, you well, have, yeah. Don't even know, because it's not really even my suitcase. It's the suitcase, mm -hmm. but you don't know that you can take whatever you want out of it until somebody says, can you take so-and-so out of it? Yes. There's a lot of compartments in that suitcase you don't know about yet. That's right. It's yeah. it's it's the TARDIS. I've got lots of them. <laughs> the TARDIS suitcase. Rarity can be such an over the top character at times. Over the top. Um, um, no. Is there is there one actress that you like to channel when she goes into her her hysterics? The one the one <laughs> actress you're trying to you're trying to channel when she's doing her thing. 
No. no. I, I would never want to appropriate another actor's voice, work. And In fact, I've been asked before in my life to, um, uh, because I'm fairly good at accents, mm-hmm. been assumed that um, I can do imitations. Okay. And I, I can't. And at, I can't at a very fundamental level. I don't want to. Um, I was in I was in Little Voice, you know the show Little Voice. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever saw that. I think so. Yeah, that play, and and uh, and they wanted you to do Shirley Bassey, uh, Judy Garland, Edith Piaf, mm-hmm. um, a whole bunch of other characters, and I just didn't like it because you know they they're themselves, and right. you I don't want to walk off with somebody else's face. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, but I, I, I love doing accents. I mm-hmm. love finding something new, but I don't want to channel anybody else because right. they're there. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, yeah. We are all so very happy that Princess Luna is back, that we see more of Princess Luna because they teased us in the first season. They teased right. us more in the second season. Wretched and then people. finally she's back. So over two seasons, the fandom has gone off and created this character background for her because we didn't have anything else to do. This is what we do, you know. So, being the actress who plays Princess Luna, mm. what do you feel that her? How how do you feel about her? Is she like the angsty teenage kid? Is she a little more adult? How do you feel about Princess Luna and what she's like? Uh, well, I I really like the touches of mystery, and I think it gives a lot of depth to the show if she can actually add that sort of dimension of dream. Mm-hmm. I, I keep going back to, um, well, my druthers, what I would like from the character. I have no control over it, right. uh, over the writing. Mm-hmm. As much as, you know, it'd be really great if people would give me control over the entire world. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, it would, be, it would be a perfect world. But uh, I really like the idea of, you know, like um, Neil Gaiman's Sandman. Mm-hmm. The 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 char- the character of dream. I I would l- I love that whole sort of thing of that informing of of life um, on so many because we are these multi dimensional beings. So I just I would love that kind of richness. You know, yes. it, it, uh, bearing in mind that it's a cartoon and bearing it's for mind, the, it's a cartoon for little girls. Yeah, but there you go. That is, that's sort of like I I loved it when Princess Luna came to Scootaloo and in the dream. And, and helped her. I love that bit. I, I hope we see more of that myself. I know. I know. I like so it too. Awesome. I like it too. Yes. And I, and I like it too. Um, okay. Next question. Uh, you make all these wonderful Vine movies. They're so awesome. They're cool. Um, you show <laughs> you show off your garden and your kitty cat and all that kind of stuff. Tell us a little bit more about your garden and what you're what you're doing with it. What you're what what is the most of your garden? Is it flowers or is it vegetables? What do you what do you do with your garden? It's mostly. F- it's mostly flowers. Uh, it started out when I bought this place with a bunch of sad Paris trees. Mm-hmm. They get very dry, and they, yeah. And I dug them up, and gradually I just started feeding the beds. I'd never had a garden before, mm-hmm. and you know, I got seaweed and got composter, and um, you experiment with things and I found that what I like are just really big blossoms or really colorful blossoms. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of perennials in there. I do have some things that I eat a, a lot of, um, particularly herbs. I go through monstrous amounts of mint because it's very enzymey. So I really like mint cool. um, in smoothies and in juices in the morning. And, uh, yeah, so it's basically either you can eat it or it's very, very pretty. That's my garden rules. Nice. Uh, yeah. I see, Princess, I see Princess Luna has been taking walks in your garden lately. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. It was, a bit, it was a bit of a lame video, I'm afraid. No, it but wasn't. Yeah. It was awesome. Oh, good. I well, loved I didn't, it. I didn't know it was going to generate because I, ha- I actually had done like three fantastic vines mm-hmm. at work. And they didn't generate. And I was like, <laughs> oh. so we'll see. Yeah. That happens sometimes. We need to see more uh, Princess Luna walking in the garden, right, guys? Yeah, <laughs> we'd love to see some more of that. Um, can... For someone who was so put off on doing Twitter in the beginning, I, I, they had to drag you kicking and screaming to Twitter. Um, you seem to have done 
quite right by yourself using Twitter in interesting ways with the poetry and the like. And are you still having fun with it, coming up with new ideas? Uh, well, I don't try very hard. I just, uh, you know, communicate sort of off the top of my head. But that's kind of me. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't ever try very hard. <laughs> I think trying is so trying. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, no, it's just whatever sort of grabs me at the spur of the moment. So in a way, that sort of suits, suits me fine. Because if it was really difficult or I had to struggle to figure out what to say and stuff, I doubt I would, I doubt I would bother. It's more entertaining the way, <laughs> the way you do it. I, I always love to play off of what you come up with because it's just so freaking Thank awesome. Thank you. And you've got a magnificent, spontaneous, strange brain, too. Oh, well, thank you. It's right up here. <laughs> Welcome very much. Yeah. Um, Equestria Girls. Let's go into yeah. Equestria Girls. Um, human rarity. Let me get this question right. I wrote it. Um, it seemed that all the human girls, rarity, Twilight Sparkle, you know, uh, other than Twilight Sparkle, but uh, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, they were all just a little bit off. From oh, yeah? from their pony versions. I mean, they weren't as gregarious, if you want to call it that. They weren't as, you know, they weren't truly into their characters that you would have seen in Pony. They were a little bit pulled back. Was that a was that a directoral, uh, did the director say to do that? Or was it just something that came about by trying to play them as humans? Do you know what? I I haven't seen it. And if Hasbro would like to give me a copy, I think that would be <sighs> magnificent. Um yeah, no, I haven't seen it. And uh, somebody uh, asked the question well before it was released that we were doing it, that there was a Equestria Girls coming out. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I, I thought they meant there was a television series called Equestria Girls. Mm-hmm. I didn't remember it at all. And I don't remember it at all. <laughs> I think I think I, I was I, – I, did I have a very small part? Um, it was a bit small, um, but it was, it was still yeah. – she was still – uh, integral to the end of the story where she came up with some yeah. ears and tails for the girls to wear when they had to get the rest of the school to get behind Twilight Sparkle to win the crown so they could be- defeat the bad guy. Oh, I'm dreadful. I, I can't remember it at all. Oh, well, I mean, we'll there, to do there are no small parts. There's no. only small dressing rooms. Yes. But still, <laughs> I totally don't remember it. Well, I, I must, you know, I'll do my homework eventually. Is it out? Is it? Yes, can you get yes a it's been in the theaters for months now. So it, can you get a video of the video, it? Though? The, the DVD is coming out. Help me, folks. But uh, August, August, a couple uh, like the first week of August. So okay. yeah. So Unless I've got that... it on Amazon. Dot um, Amazon is pre-ordered, so it'll be here whenever it releases. So hopefully okay. it'll be here soon. Um, okay. Yeah, it's gonna. It's awesome. So I, I thought it was great. You know, I, I had my trepidations going in, and I found I found it to be entertaining. So I, I, I really did like it. Uh, to answer your other question, I don't think there was any kind of conscious pulling back decision mm-hmm. made. No. I think if somebody had said, uh, tone it down, you're a human now, I might have remembered something like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, fir- the first thing we do see of Rarity is her trying to put a costume on Twilight Sparkle, trying to get her, <laughs> trying to dress her up. So obviously it's Rarity. So- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's go to Pepper Clark. Yeah. Of Little Spit Shop. Um, All right. She's there. more. She's more of a gregarious, clowning character. She's always having fun. She's always doing something funny. Um, do they let you ad lib her a lot? As because you're hilarious in real life. So <laughs> do you come up with some things, sort of a la you know, genie in the bottle from Disney? Sort of you go off and they they write it later. I don't know that they ever keep anything, but I do go off regularly because I can't help it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I really can't. I don't think they keep on it because they tend to mock me when I go off, <laughs> to tell you the truth. No. <laughs> they tend to say, read the script. Uh, because, it, because it is a, it, it is a thing. Somebody, mm-hmm. many people, and I think in our cases, have spent a lot of time uh, building the script. So mm-hmm. once you go off like a rocket. It's not really something that they love you to do. You're wasting their time. Oh, but I can't always help it. Yes. But well, don't stop. Don't try helping it. Just keep going because it's freaking <laughs> hilarious. Um, okay. I will. Okay. So we know that Kazumi Evans is rare yes. singing voice, and she's yep. wonderful in that in that role. Um, but have you, in all the years you've been doing voice acting, actually had a singing part? Oh, uh, well, I, I was in musical theater for years and years. 
uh, did uh, a lot of a lot of Sondheim and which is a lot of everything else too. Um, uh, I just finished doing um, a Barbie movie with music in it last week. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if I was allowed to say that, but anyway. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, in Martha, I did charactery kind of singing, mm-hmm. uh, but no, like no, you know, the whole really musical cartoon stuff mm-hmm. is kind of a in the last ten years kind of phenomenon. It's a, it's Glee and it's Japanimation that right. have really inspired that sort of uh, consciousness. Mm-hmm. And before that, we didn't really there wasn't a lot in. Um, in regular cartoons, music, uh, so it was kind of rare. Mm-hmm. Um, but but in the theater, yeah, I did a lot of singing. The singing, I did the, some. The singing. I did we some love, of the singing. We love the singing. Love speaking, the singing. Speaking, speaking, speaking of the singing of the things. Yes. Sing Princess the thing. Celestia. Yes, my sister. She's yes, very much. She had a song last at the end of the last season. A song she had. Did she sing it? Did she, she sing it herself? She sang it. Nicole oh Oliver sang the song. She it, sang the it, song. It, it was awesome. Yes. Um, so, seeing as Princess Celestia has a song, yeah, we think that Pre- Princess Luna should have a song. We do. And uh, yeah. what do you think that Princess I Luna would sing about? I think an extreme slender chance that I would be the singer were it the case. Yes. But what would she sing about? What would she sing about? What would Princess Luna sing about? What do you think? Um, I imagine she would sing about dreams. Uh, I imagine she would sing about um, not being afraid of the darkness. Mm-hmm. Or at least I'm just imagining. I have yes. no idea. You know well, what? Is imagination is awesome. We love imagination around here. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I have no idea what anyone may or may not have written mm-hmm. ever. Because right. <laughs> they don't tell me. No. And it's a good thing they don't because. I'd probably blab it because I can't uh, not. So, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I think it would be about that. I think it would be about dreams. I think it would be about not being uh, a- afraid of uh, your own, the machinations of your own mind. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people are surprisingly yes. afraid of the machinations of their very own mind. And not everything that you think is important mm-hmm. or indeed even yours. You know, we're just kind of radio stations and we pick stuff up from everywhere. Mm-hmm. I read a statistic that was like, um, oh, I, I actually can't remember it, but it was an absurd number of facts that a human brain can process at the same time. Mm-hmm. So, so for example, if you're watching Kelly and you you uh, you see a bunch of advertisements and you you know you just even if you you're not listening, you're not watching, you're a part of your brain is just sucking that stuff in. Yeah. So it's yeah. So. So I, a, a lot of people are very down on themselves about the about what they think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So uh, I think it would be not to be afraid of what you think. And if it was really my show, mm-hmm. and if I could really send a message to people, it would be to mm, learn about how your brain, how your mind works, and 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 because uh, yes. there are lots of tools to make things a bit clearer. I've been working. Yep. I've been working on my head badgers for years. Your head badgers. Yes, my head badgers. <laughs> I have head badgers that want to come out and, and snap at me because I think of bad things, and I put the head badgers back in their little cages because you need to go over there. I don't want to listen to you, so you go over there. Uh huh. Head badgers. Head badgers. Yes. Heavens to Betsy. Yeah. Yep, well, it happens. Yeah. 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 Um. Did you know? Have you Have you picked up any of the comic books? Have you, have you seen any of the comic books? I walked away from the convention in Texas mm-hmm. with three of them. Mm-hmm. And until you said to me, have you looked at the comic books? I forgot that I had them. <gasps> Crazy. <laughs> so I, I know. I, re- I have to. I will read them. Yes, Gosh, I can't believe I forgot one them. One of the storylines in the yeah. latest is that rarity becomes nightmare. Yeah. Man yeah. Rarity. Here's the cover right here. Mm. So we're going to ask a question about Nightmare Rarity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, as a nightmare, 
What would you think Rarity would do with all that cosmic power? Hmm. Oh, gosh, he'd probably try and dress people better than silly thing. <laughs> 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 well, she is kind of fabulous. Her, her outfit, her nightmare outfit is fabulous. Oh my God. Nightmare, nightmare outfit? Yes. Well. Fabulous. Is she is she dark? Is she a oh, dark? Yeah. She's dark. She She's is? just like Nightmare Moon, except for she has diamond. Of course, she has her diamond cutie mark, and she has gold yeah. boots, and her helmet has diamonds on it, and her hair is even more fashionable. It's awesome. Oh my god, look at that! Really? Wow. Yes. What? It sounds like she could get a little egomaniacal. Yeah, she is a little egomaniacal. A little me me me. I'm I I I I me. Yep, yep yep pretty much. Look here here. Yes. It's all about me. Oh. Um, yes, that's what that sounds like. Yes. And, and seeing as seeing as you did Nightmare Moon, yeah, and we now have a Nightmare Rarity. Yeah. What would Nightmare Rarity sound like? Mm. I don't know. I don't think it's fair of you to ask me these questions when I'm unprepared. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have a bit more show to go. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll re-breach the subject later on. When you have I it. it'd be all about me, and it'd be a lot of I, 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 me, me, me. Then I, when I, and then I, because I, and that is me, me, I, I me, me. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's an easier one. Easy, it's interesting one. because yeah. I I heard a little girl in the pool this morning mm -hmm. doing exactly that. She <laughs> she started every sentence with. Now you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna go over there, and when I say you're gonna, and then mm -hmm. it's gonna be like this, and then she would go, watch and learn. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I know, and she was so little, and I was like, holy cow! Like who, channeling who's Diamond that? Tiara there or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rarity nightmare. Rarity might be a watching. Like, a little bit like yeah. that. Yeah. Might be like this crazy Martha Stewart. Yes. Do you think that a diamond dog would make a good pet? Oh, absolutely. Yes. You just have to give them the right diet and things to do. <laughs> <laughs> like digging gems. Things to do like digging gems yes. and saying nice things and having baths. Baths, yes. And holding, holding fans, the fan rarity. Holding fans, lighting candles, carving soap, picking the strawberries. <laughs> All that wonderful stuff, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Conventions. Conventions. You didn't go to conventions for a very long time. Then all of a sudden, you're going to lots of conventions. Um, and, and every time we see you, you're having a great time. What <laughs> changed for you uh, on the convention scene? Why, why, why do you go now and, and didn't before? Is there something that, that, that changed? Well, I've missed two, sadly. I missed Everfree, and uh, Everfree last year was the very first one that I went to. Correct, yeah. And um, it was a revelation because I just, I didn't realize how how lovely and sincere the community was and, you know, and how, uh, I don't know. When you when you sort of hear of groups of people, I, I have a little bit of a phobia of mm -hmm groups of people they can become mobs you know right. for example mm -hmm. and uh but when i was meeting people one-on-one -on -one, i was like they're just lovely they're just sweet and uh they're creating with they're engaged and it seemed to me like not speaking to people was a bit like inviting them to dinner and then ignoring them mm -hmm. um you know, if you're doing a show, then then people are in, you know engaged and right. hadn't really clocked it because we don't you know because we do our work in a little room mm -hmm. with a sticky carpet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that's sort of what changed. But I, I haven't gone to tons. No. I went to Comic Con mm -hmm. and then and I went to the Comic Palooza in Texas, and I missed this year's. Comic Con and this year's Everfree. Yeah, you were sick. So, yeah, I was. I was. Yeah. Well, I wasn't sick. I didn't feel sick. I just couldn't. You couldn't hear me. I'd be going. Ah, 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 and you'd, ah, yeah. Yeah, and I had to save my voice yes. for that. It was actually trying to pick up the zillions of shows that I missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
the My Little Pony, you know, could be all sunshine, lollipops, and tea parties, but it's not. We've seen the ponies attack a dragon. We've seen the ponies... <laughs> Do we really attack a dragon? We've seen the f ponies fight off changelings. And every time we see Rarity, she's in a kung fu stance of some kind. Oh, yeah. Kung fu stance, I think, right? I think and she she's is. Got, yeah. She's so, got any, a... any insight into the possibility that Rarity is actually Bruce Lee reincarnated? Yes, no? I think that's absolutely possible. <gasps> I think her inner ninja is very strong. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, you know, she's just um, plagued by a few protocols mm -hmm. of aesthetics that she feels are important. Yes. But her inner self is all, wah, 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 yes. wah. Absolutely. Yes. If you lay one finger on his cute scaly head, she will have your but in a sling, I swear to God. We'll sling your butt in yes. the in the Thames. Yes, you will. Yeah. Um, let's see. Last question before we go to commercial will be this. Do you think that the Cutie Mark Crusaders will ever finally realize their true talents of singing, building things, and dancing? Oh, I God, I hope so. Yes. Because <laughs> it seems a bit endless, a and bit. it's terrible to watch people not ever succeed. Mm-hmm. Although a lot of drama is built on people not ever succeeding, mm -hmm. but but you know, in the name of all the gods of character development, yes, I hope that they do. Yes, I, yes, I do hope that they do because they keep shining it. Every now and then they do something really cool, but they don't realize that that was really cool and that was probably what they're supposed to do. I know. <laughs> yeah, and they go off to something else. It's like ah, yeah, stop resetting this drama. Build on it. Build on it. Yes. Yeah. So with that, we are going to go to commercial. And okay. our commercial this week is Rarity's Boutique. I'm sure she has a wonderful fall sale coming up. So you guys watch that. And we'll be back in just a few minutes with Charity and with what's going on in the convention scene. And then you out there can ask your questions. So get in the ICQ chat, talk to Screwball, and we'll be back in just a minute and a half. So stay tuned. Since the beginning of time, the elite of Equestria have longed for pony fashions that truly express the essence of their very souls. Patiently waiting decades, no, centuries, for the perfect pony gown. Today, at long last, Equestria, your wait is over. Let's hear it for the breathtaking designs of Ponyville's own Ready! Certainement, Spike. All your ponies. Be sure to visit the shop in Ponyville. For the rest of us, be sure to pick up the t-shirts, the bags, or even the posters from willowfine.com. That's right, willowfine.com for all your pony needs. And remember, Carousel Boutique, where every fashion says chic, unique, and magnifique. We're back now. Oh. Yes. So, all you ponies out there, go down to Carousel Boutique mm -hmm. down near Ponyville, and you tell them Dusty Cat sent you, and I bet it's 10% off with Rarity just because I sent you there. Just because I sent you there. I, th I, th I, have, I, I know somebody. I think I can set that up. So, <laughs> but all you humans, you need to go to welovefine.com and pick up all the pony things you need. T-shirts, bags, backpacks, all the good stuff. They have leggings now. Leggings? Leggings. And bikinis. Have they and got like undershorts? Hair? No. Really? Really. Britches? Britches. So the leggings, do they have hair on them and hoofs? No. They got ponies oh. though. Ponies all over. <laughs> and that's awesome. So you need to go there. If you and then they actually have the shirt for this show, which will be changing soon. I've got some artists on it, so be on the lookout for new shirts from this very program, Stay Brony, my friends. With that, we're gonna go to convention updates. Convention updates coming up here are hey. There's a convention this weekend. Actually, there's two. One's in Europe, and one's in Baltimore. And Baltimore, that's BronyCon. BronyCon is coming up really fast, people. So if you are anywhere in the area, you're going to want to go to that, because they got everybody. 
Oh my God. Emmy Larson, Nicole Oliver, Amy Heaton Rogers, Brenda Critchlow, Kathy Westluck, Michelle Graber, Lee Tokar, Katie Cook, Andy Price, and Heather Breckel are all going to be there, including me and Screwball are going to be there. So, and <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be on a few panels, and Screwball's going to be on a couple panels, and we're going to be there with Everfree Network. We got three feeds. We're going to cover the whole thing. So, you need to be there. If you can't be there, check out Everfree Network because we got you covered. And then in Europe, we got. Uh, where's it at? Uh, that's on my Europe list. Where is it? Uh, pff, Galicon. <laughs> Galicon, August 3rd to 4th. You know, Ludwigsburg, Germany. And they've got <laughs> Andrew Libman and Peter New are going to be there. Anneli Heed, Swedish Spitfire, is going to be there, who did a nice little thing with me, which was awesome. Michael Pan, the German voice of Discord, and Julie Bastels, who's the French voice of Rarity, is also going to be there. So check that out. That is going to be awesome on the Europe side. Now we have Brony, Fa uh, Brony Can, August 24th, 25th, that this wonderful Yay! lady is going to be at, aren't you? Yes. Yes. So I'll they are going, there. yes, Spelt Brony Can, that's August 24th, 25th in Richmond, B.C. They not only have her, they have Andrea Libman, Andrew Francis, Lee Tokar, Nicole Gauss. They're all going to be there, so check it out. That's going to be an awesome time. Brony Fanfare. Thank you, guys. You invited me to come to your place, but I've already got a commitment. I really wish I could be there, but that's going to be September 13th through 15th, Austin, Texas. They just announced Matt Hill. They've got Sam Vincent and Matt Hill, <laughs> Flim of Flim and Flam, and Double D of Ed, Ned, and Eddie. Matt Hill is Soren, also Ed of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. you got two of the three Eds are going to be there. It's going to be an awesome time. So uh, they've also got Paleo of Brony Breakdown of this very program, and then you've got uh, Rhea Chan. Rhea Chan's going to be there, so that's going to be awesome from them. So, and then we have, coming up on the Europe side, Buck, August 23rd, 25th, Manchester, UK, Cindy Morrow, Michelle Kreber is going to be there, Living Tombstone, Acoustic Brony, Glaze, General Mumble, more guys on the music side are going to be there. That's going to be all kinds of awesome. And then uh, Sack Brony Expo, which is the one I'm going to be at, which is September 14th, one day. I'll be there with Apple Cider of, of uh, those guys. And then, yeah, that, and then I'll be at Canalot Con, November 16th, 17th. So that's uh, everything that's going on the convention side. If you, any of you conventions want me to give you a, a hype up, uh, send me something at the manlysbrony.com address. And we're into charity. Charity time. So you guys pulled it out. Well, actually one person pulled it out. Tony Fleece's The Hero Initiative was looking really sad down at the end of the week. Really sad. Didn't look like we were going to hit our $500 number. Looks like this page of art right here was going to go home to Tony. But you know what? That didn't happen. We hit our $500 number because of well, pretty much one man. And that man, Rare Chris. Rare Chris came through with $310. Yay! All, all by his little lonesome self. And that puts him into the Rarities Hall of Generosity on the oh. website. Mwah. Yes. So, we made our $500. So that means not only... Are we drawing for this stack of stuff right here, which we'll go through one more time. We have two My Little Pony covers by Tony Fleece right here. These are the Hot Topic covers. We have one derpy little hat here. That's also from Hot Topic. But out of my own personal comic book collection, we have Death of Superman. We have two Zagi Ojimbo color specials from the 90s by Fanagraphics Books. Hard to come by right now. And I have... Space Beaver number one, done by Derek Robertson, who drew for Wolverine for years. Guess what? There's a movie called Wolverine out right now. So, all of that. On top of this wondrous, beautiful page of artwork, original, which was released in the Rainbow Dash miniseries. So, you get all of that. And I have a hat full of names. Right here. So, we're going to dig in a hat full of names. Digging, digging, digging. And we're going to pick this one right here. Who is it? Timidon. Timidon, you win all that stuff. So I will contact you after the show in the next couple of days, maybe after BronyCon, because I'm going to get start getting packed as soon as this show is over, and we will contact you about that stuff. Now, we go forward with Tabitha St. Germain. Tabitha. Tabitha, yes. Tell us a bit about of your charity. Uh, Society for Promoting Environmental Conservation. Yes. <laughs> that place. It's, yes. Um, well, they do a lot of educational stuff about the environment. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, they take kids on nature walks and plant gardens, and they were kind of original um, environmental activists in Vancouver. Okay. And um, I know that uh, you sort of um, ask that the charities that we pick are not sort of politically contentious or yada yada, but um, anything with the environment is always going to be. Always going to be, and that's, it's and that's okay. And that's okay. It, it, it's 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 basically a group that promotes environmentalism within cities. So basically, we don't within, need to have you know pavement everywhere. We, yeah, we and have, I think we have parks, baseball yeah. fields. <laughs> I think that when people grow up and their garden is a parking lot, yeah, they don't have consciousness about. Um, you know, I, I remember driving with someone and they threw a pop can out the window. And I was like, what? We were we were in the middle of nature. And yeah. and then I realized that was an inner city person who really yeah. basically had no, no sense idea. of nature as a as a, a, a place to go and rejuvenate mm -hmm. and a place that deserves respect. And yeah. yeah. And yeah. and from which all of our health derives. So. Yeah, I'm pretty passionate about the environment. So that's what that charity is. Yeah. Absolutely. I've been out hunting with my family years and years and years ago, and you'd come across a can, <laughs> a Stroh's can from like 10 years prior, sitting out in the middle of the woods in the middle of nowhere. Isn't why? that strange? <laughs> you know, why? Why is this pop? Why is this soda can or this beer can or this bottle in the middle of freaking nowhere? I mean, I, I used to rock climb up in Lake Tahoe, and you'd find <laughs> bottles stuck between freaking stones. Why? Take it out with yeah. you. Pack it in, pack it's it out. It's just not people, it's just not understanding. It's not being conscious of it. I don't think it's really anyone's fault, but it's, you know, it's old and it it's, can change. It's old and it can change. And we're going to change it's it old, a little bit at a time. Change. So, yeah. what is up for this charity? You give five bucks at manlysbrony.com. You go over there, you click on it, you register at manlysbrony.com. You register over there at the other website so I know who you are and I can get a hold of you. Five bucks get you into this little drawing for everything we got. So, what we got this time? To start with, this signed derpy hooves by guess who? That little lady right there, Tabitha Saint Germain. So that is up for grabs. That is awesome in and of itself, isn't it? Not isn't that awesome that she would do that for you? But no. If we crack five hundred dollars, five. My awesome and lovely girlfriend Amy has given up her derpy card. Season two card oh. from Everfree Northwest. It's right here. So if you guys crack 500 bucks, that is also up for grabs. So make it happen. Because that is an awesome prize pack right there. I, I want to keep that for myself. But I can't because it's all for you out there. Go do the right thing. And you get a chance at all that good stuff. And with that... I need to find Screwball. Screwy! Hey! Screw! Yo! Oh, there you go. Hey! What have you been doing? Under the, the table meantime? again! God! <laughs> I'm very quiet, okay? I'm a ninja, I much know. like Rarity. <laughs> Screwball Ninja. What's going on? Oh, hey! Just, How you been? And you've got a uh, ninja stash there, Dusty. I know, I'm, I'm your ninja stash. Does your does your stash hit things when they go out of line? Does it come out and go whoosh in your yeah. It's only done it once. Oh. Only done it once. I've sort of got it under control. Good man. So, you know, it only it only obeys my commands now. So Good, good. We have to get we have to get ourselves, to, our yeah. total selves, even our mustache is under command. Have to be under control at all times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. so what what do we got? What do we got out there in, in, in the chat land, buddy? What's the chatty well, box uh, doing? There's, there's actually a bit more con news I almost forgot. Uh, Buck has actually released a t-shirt, an exclusive uh, Brit Britannia uh, figurine today, actually. Wow. And check out their website because yeah. they're pretty they're pretty adorable, honestly. Yeah. The t-shirt is Bad Flank and the and the figurine you just want. <laughs> cool. Bad Flank? Awesome. Bad Flank, awesome. That's how I avoid swearing. I like to... <laughs> you know what's Bad Flank? This, what? this San Diego Comic-Con... Vinyl scratch. That's bad, Link. Look at that. That is wow. Yes. <laughs> I was like, woo! I just want to create a dubstep song just so that the lights will sync in the box. It's awesome. 
goodness. Uh, let's just say that I think this show has broke the record for the most questions I've ever got taken in. Wow. Make them good, <laughs> man. Make them good. There's so many. Um, uh, so this one is from Storm Shield. Uh, huh. Um, question for you, Tabitha. Um, since you are sick and missed Everfree, are you planning to go to next year's Everfree? Uh, I very much hope so. I know that I'm going to Finland over the from July 5th to the 2nd to 5th or something like that. So I'll be in Finland at a, at a My Little Pony convention there. Oh, you're going to the Finland fair. Ooh, that's awesome. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. <sighs> I want to go I'm to that a, one. There's no way. Yes. <laughs> wow. So it depends when uh, it depends when Everfree falls because I'm not really sure what their dates are yet. But I, I'd really like to go to Everfree. They're, they're, you know, the first con I went to, and I feel very much in love with all of them. And uh, just today, I got a, a card, a get well card, which I'll post later on. Um, that they, they sent to me, and it's got all these signatures. And I was like, "Oh, this is so nice." <laughs> anyway, yeah. Cool. Oh, that, uh, I don't know why this reminded me, but I never had the full chance to verbally say thank you, Tabitha, for actually choosing me for your dance competition. <laughs> oh, you're so awesome. Dancing in the rain. So awesome. Bravissimo. <laughs> yes, yeah, it was, it was uh, for those who don't know, Tabitha did a uh, uh, dance competition a while back, and I was so embarrassed doing it because yep. I almost got hit by a truck, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and then afterwards, I'm like, I should have sent it, I should have sent it. And uh, and then Tabitha chose it, and I was just like, it made my night. It was, only, it was like 2 in the morning, but I was so happy. <laughs> it's truly awesome. So, hilarious. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so um, I'll go on to the next question. Um, uh, so this one is from Hexamane uh, to Tabitha. You're well known for your dreams on Twitter. So my question is for everyone. What's the most interesting dream you've ever had, ponies and or otherwise? Uh, your question is for, ev is for everybody. Yep, everybody. So you go ahead if you, if you got one. Oh, um, I had a dream I was some strange kind of bouncy creature. And I, uh, there were these extremely tall trees, taller than California redwoods. Mm -hmm. And there was like, wherever I was had some sort of gravity that you could spring uh -huh. and go woo, all over the top of the, and I had this great kind of, almost like a flying dream, but it was like a bouncing around redwoods sort of dream. Mm -hmm. That was one of my faves. What about you, Scree? Ah, uh, the one that just comes up is one I just had the other night of, uh, uh, me flying and minding my own business and I realized there was a huge thunderstorm coming and there was kids playing around on trees and stuff. I'm like, this is the most dangerous thing I've ever seen in my life. So I kind of sacrificed myself, jumped into the clouds and got hit by a bunch of lightning and then that's when I woke up uh, having a sort of a sweat nightmare. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Yeah, wow. There, there you go. If you think that's dark, I'm not even going to tell some of the other things I did, but let's just say people think I need to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> No, I, that's totally normal to me, and I I like your um your your inner you is yeah. is not selfish. Not selfish it's... at all. <laughs> even, as anything even but in, selfish. Even in dreams, apparently, I want to I don't know. <laughs> I I don't I don't remember my dreams. I, I really don't. Um, I stopped remembering my dreams as a young man, and I really I I sleep like a log. I don't really remember them. That may be why, because I get up at three thirty in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so that always is a bit of an interrupter. Yeah. And I also will go, like, I'll let the cats out, meditate, mm -hmm. and then sometimes go back to bed for an hour. And that's when I tend to have, like, the loopiest dreams. And There's I hear that. There's a term to that. Um, I did a uh, studying on lucid dreaming and that sort of stuff. And I know there's an actual term to because some people dream it differently. Others uh, can go almost instantly. Mm -hmm. Some people actually set their alarm so they wake themselves up at like one in the morning and then they'll go back to sleep in order to start the actual dreams to occur. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Because some people are structured different on that sort of thing. But I, I you have um, what is actually kind of a rare thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I, not so rare. I, a lot of people, I, I, a lot of oh, meditation. Yes. Yeah, probably. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I never knew you were a dreamer. That's really awesome. 
Yeah, I love like, like Do you have a dream diary? Uh I uh I do. Yeah, I I miss some of it cuz you know if you have to get up and you have to work and you know, you know, I'll miss writing it down, but I do every chance I get basically I I write down what I have. And the little bits that I post on Twitter are usually just things that just are um, very small, interesting images that I found in the middle of it because they're usually really complicated. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so. That was Hexman. <laughs> uh, so uh, this one is from Evil Truth. A uh, question to you, Tabitha. What is one of the weirdest lines you have ever done on the show? Weirdest lines I've ever done on the show. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I don't know. Do I have to remember a line? Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the weirdest lines. Oh, honestly, bless you, but I couldn't say. Uh, I'd have to comprehensively remember all of them mm -hmm. to pick that out, and I just don't. Well, it has been four seasons. It has been four seasons, yeah. Next time I say a really weird thing, though, on the show, I'll write it down. <laughs> I find on Littlest Pet Shop, I'm perpetually saying extremely weird strange stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm just constantly reading new ones. I'm, uh, so this one uh, is from Flare Runner. Uh, question to all: What pet do you see Luna having? Mm. What? I'd love it if she had a bat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good a one. Bat, that'd be cool. I mean, an owl would be lovely too, but it's been potterized. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, like and that. Bat, but bats are adorable. Twilight has an owl. Little oh, mousy yeah. faces. She does? Twilight has an owl, yes. Owlicious. Oh, Owlicious, of course. Yes. Of course she does. Yeah. A bat. A bat. A batty bat. Not, not, just, not just a little bat. We're talking like Philomena-sized bat. <laughs> You know, the king of the bats. That there, has to, there has to be some mystical bat thing but that's huge. How about the wingspan is huge, there you but go. The, the mousy bit is yeah. weenie. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I agree. A bat, definitely. <laughs> Get out of uh, fandom. You know what? Yeah, that would be a really cool yeah. picture. <laughs> Get out of fandom. Luna needs a pet. <laughs> So this one is from Gavin Jaff. A question for Tabitha. As Rarity's VA, what words do you think she would use to describe the creativity of the Brony fandom? Hmm. I think they are marvelous, special, perfect, um, perpendicular, purple, full of <laughs> sausages and um, <laughs> <laughs> green and purple and I've uh, no idea. <laughs> I like sausages. Smoke sausages. There smoke you go. Sausages. Cheese and smoke sausages. <laughs> oh, Tabitha, I love you. It's so funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Next. <laughs> so this one, uh, uh, oh, uh, from Callow, question for Tabitha. If you could meet Rarity, what words of wisdom would you share to her? <laughs> um, stop looking in the mirror. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, she can't stop looking in the mirror. That's absurd. Yes. Um, what would was, uh, um, everything is perfect as it is. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> because Rarity can't stop trying to improve it, but not everybody needs, needs improvement or. Even, yeah, yeah, wants it, needs it. You know, there gets to be a bit of a do on to others, whether yeah. they bloody well need it or not, <laughs> you know. And, uh, yeah, that's what I would say. Everything is uh, So this one uh, is from uh, Bot117. Uh, apparently his friend, Christopher uh, Norman, is a huge, huge Luna uh, fan. And uh, they're wondering for maybe a surprise you could do a shout out in Luna's voice to uh, your number one fan, Christopher Norman. Christopher. <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> what would what would Luna say? Christopher, your shoes are under your feet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Oh goodness. <laughs> um yep. uh oh. Sorry, I just lost my place. Where did I just put you? I don't know, I'm right here. Ah, uh, why do you always say that every time I'm talking to myself? <laughs> because um, I can. So... <laughs> Ooh. So this one's from Violent Bray, uh, to Tabitha. What was your favorite cartoon growing up and did it influence influence you in any way? Uh growing up. Gosh, that's a long time ago. Yep. Well, <laughs> join the club. <laughs> I remember when I was, I would say about eight, seven or eight years old, and I was staying at um, an auntie's place in Nova Scotia in Antigonish. And we only had, I think, one TV channel, which was CBC, and it was pretty dire. Mm -hmm. But on Saturday mornings, there was this Japanimation show called Marine Boy. And that was the very first crush I ever had. <laughs> Marine Boy. I know Marine? that show. You know that show? I know that show. You do not? Yes, watch. I know that show. I'm 45 what? years old. I know that show. Wow, really? Yeah, well, Detroit you... was Detroit was nothing but Jap animation redubs when I was Re growing up. Yeah. It was Wow. Uh, Science and Ninja Team Gatchaman. It was Mock Go, Go, Go. It was uh, Jungle Emperor. It was... Wow. Voltron, it was nothing but Jap animation redubs. That, well, it was very, very beautiful, especially for the time. And then, of course, my family moved to Africa, and uh, there, there, I saw no animation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, I just saw Chinese movies, kung fu movies. That, that um, explains a lot. Yeah, which I, I still am oh. a huge Ch uh, Chinese oh, yeah. movie and kung fu movie oh, oh, junkie. Oh, oh, I have to ask you. Yeah. I have to ask you. Master of Flying Guillotine. Wow. <laughs> Have you seen it? Um, n no. Oh, um, oh, I gotta get you that copy. Oh, you're gonna love that. Master of Master Flying, Flying Guillotine. Yes. How old is awesome. it? Awesome. Oh, it's uh, back in 1973 or four, and well, then it has I a one arm made... boxer in it. Oh. Yeah. I don't think I have seen it. Oh, I gotta get that too. Yeah, but I knew the faces of all of those actors from Chinese cinema better than I knew any North American actors' faces. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't know their names because they because I just didn't retain them. But that's yes. that's those were the those were my movie stars. Oh yeah. Next. Ah, yeah. uh, so this one is from uh, Leo Hardship for you, Dusty. Yes. Uh, just bought my first motorcycle. Advice to keep it healthy and running. What is it? Is it Japanese? Is it Harley? What is it? Because it all matters. You know, basically, uh, basically yeah. you change the oil every 4,000 miles and make sure that it gets fresh tires and change the spark plugs every year and use use high test gas. Don't use that 87 crud and your bike will, will last you a very long time. You know, so don't neglect it when the, the book says to do certain things. Do it. Change the oil, lube the chain. Take care of the tires, just tighten the spokes, whatever that book tells you to do, do it. And your bike will last a very, very long time for you. You know, a lot of people just neglect it thinking, oh, it'll be fine. And then all of a sudden they go down the road and the wheel falls off. You know, not a very good thing. So if you don't have a manual for your bike, shame on you. Go buy it. Yeah, go get one. <laughs> First thing I do when I buy a motorcycle is I go buy the factory manual because it has every nut, bolt, torque spec, how much oil is supposed to be anywhere that that motorcycle is supposed to have in that year. So if I buy a used bike, I go to that dealership and I buy the factory manual, no matter what it costs. Because if I'm going to fix the motorcycle, it tells me exactly what I need to know. Good investment. Wow. Next. <laughs> so this one is from Firemane. Who he sent this one a long time ago. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe... Uh, I still remember this. Um, uh, so this one um, is, uh, you know, Fireman is making those amazing wood carvings, right, Tapitha? Yeah, I've got a couple of them. Yeah. Yes. In the yeah. Luna one, have you ever seen, quote unquote, the hidden message? 
There's a hidden message? <gasps> <laughs> oh, oh, my hidden uh, message. oh my god. Nightmare I, mode is shocked over my shoulder. Shocked. Holy cow. I have to I know. I have to go and get it. Um, are you gonna tell me what it is? I could tell you if you want. <laughs> you have to go and get it first. Hang on. Can, can I go get it? Go get it. Talk, yes, definitely. It. Talk amongst yourselves. We're talking amongst ourselves. So, Dusty, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, actually. It was 84 degrees. I actually went down to Build-A-Bear to see if I could get myself a Twilight Sparkle, but they wouldn't sell it to me. There was one extra I... stuffed. There was one stuffed there with the dress on it, and they would not let me have it. What? I was disappointed. That is blasphemy. Disappointed. That's blasphemy, man. I can't believe what I just heard. I heard there was a stuffed bear with a dress on it, and they wouldn't let you have it. Is that correct? Yes. Well, Build-A-Bear down here in the States has been doing pony bears. They had Rainbow Dash. And Twilight Sparkle, here's Rainbow right here. Rainbow Dash! Yes. But what? Twilight Sparkle is being released with Spike on August 1st. So Ooh. I went down thinking that maybe I could get one today so I could have it on the show. But the manager who likes me wasn't there. And they had oh. one stuffed and it was sitting there so you could see it, but they wouldn't sell it to me. And I was like, I want it. I want to give you money. You won't give it to me. Why won't you give it to me? I give you money. No, they wouldn't do it. I heard one of your badgers. Yep. That's my badger. <laughs> I've got Luna, and I I still can't see what the message. It's it's it, it once once you notice it, you'll see it. Okay, um, I believe uh, I'm trying to recall how it went because um, he sent this back in June. Um, uh, uh, I believe it was in the tail. If quote me if I'm wrong, Firemain, but if you look at the stars inside her tail. Or was it the main? I'm pretty sure it was the tail. Uh, you'll see, connect the dots, and it'll actually say T Y for Derpy, which means what? thank you for Derpy. Oh, <laughs> you gotta look closely. If I can, if I can find a picture and say, yeah, right at the tail, he says, uh, you, you gotta like connect the dots to the stars. You'll actually see it saying T Y for Derpy. There's a lot of stars in my tail. That doesn't sound right at all. <laughs> Um, but there are, there are a lot of stars here. There are a lot here. of stars there. Yes. Yeah. If I turn on my camera, will you see it? No. No. Bottom, okay. oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Bottom curve of the tail, oh. right? I'm guessing right at the tip. Ooh. It's very small. It must be bloody small. <laughs> I have terrible eyesight as well. Yes, I do too. I, I have to use these things now. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's there. Um, if, oh, if I, I can see. even get. Oh my god. Well, that's nice. I like having a secret in my tail. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I can read now. I don't have to do this. <laughs> okay. Then Next. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, uh, before I put you. Uh, oh, uh, here we go. Um. Uh. Question for all from Darth Sombra. Um, what do you do? I know Darth Sombra. That's pretty dark. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> a question for all. Um, what do you think Luna and Celestia's relationship was like before they were princesses? That's hmm. a question for everyone. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> it was like, that's my tube top. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> 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 oh, you broke me. <laughs> oh, and I bet it was—I bet it was a Rainbow Dash tube top too. But there you go. Thank you, Hot Topic. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think they were probably. It sounds like they were a bit competitive. Oh yeah. Older sister, younger sister. I don't know. I had an older sister. Mm -hmm. uh, I cut. The blonde streak out of her hair in the middle of the night when she was, <gasps> and she shaved my eyebrows off. Oh! <laughs> so, I, I have you a, know yeah. these things can go anyway. Any which way? Yes, I have a twin brother. Do you really? Yes, I have a twin brother who was held back a year in, high, in grade school, so I was always a year ahead of him, and it, and it was no end of trouble. No end. Of Are trouble. you very alike? Are you? No, like actually, we're very different. Very. Oh, really? yeah. We're, we're fraternal, not not uh, identical. So we're very different. Is he is he a Hellion? Um, he went into the Navy and was pretty yeah. much a Hellion in the Navy. He's a Hellion. 
and uh, I love him to death, but he's he's got an edge to him. So yeah. Oh, well, you know, who doesn't? Who doesn't? Yeah. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, here. Oh no! Wait, wait. Eh. 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 Wait, wait, what? I got it. <laughs> um, uh, so this one is from uh, Parasol. Uh, question for Tabitha: What is your favorite plant, and why? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's like Sophie's choice. I honestly couldn't choose. Um, you know, it, it's um, once the spring starts, the 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 beauty just rolls over. You know, I mean, I look oh, yeah. forward to the big fluffy tulips first of all in the spring, and then the peonies, and then the big California poppies, and then I look forward to um, uh, I don't know. The things that can come in slightly warmer weather and around now, I'm all over the dahlias, uh, the lilies when they come out. It's all of them. I I really love the big Mm -hmm. blooms. I've got some huge zinnias right now and some huge hollyhocks, and I love them all. Nice. They smell good. Oh, but it smells really nice. Cool. I'd what? love to see your garden sometime. It just sounds like a beautiful place. <laughs> <laughs> I like it a lot. It's a really good... I feel like it's kind of my soul. Yeah. Um, you can just sort of see... Yeah. Quiet nature just... places are awesome. Yes, totally. We're, we're very close here to the California Redwoods. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. 40 minutes I could be in California Redwood State Park. Do and... you go? Oh, yeah. I go at least once every couple of months. Mm, nice. I'm, I'm from Michigan, and I, I like trees and water and nature stuff. So I have to get out of this town every couple of months, or I go stir crazy. So it's a very I, w- good I will idea. go. I will go to the redwoods. I'll go up to Boulder Creek. I'll go up to Tahoe. Whatever. Just get the heck out of town for a while. And because I have a motorcycle, I can go whenever I want. So. Mm-hmm. Yes. Very handy. Very handy. <laughs> um. So this one is. <laughs> So this one is from Jane Justice! Jane Justice! What do you want to know, young man? Resident superhero. <laughs> Manipulator of cornflakes. Manipulator of cornflakes! Scourge of Dr. Squishy. Scourge of Dr. Squishy. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Soggy milk is his arch nemesis. <laughs> so what, what does James want? Justice want to know this week? There's two I've got to bring up here because I like these both. In using Luna's royal canterlot voice, can you scream James Justice? <laughs> we just did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's, it's Luna's turn know. now. James Justice! There we go. There you go. I hope your hair blew off your head. Yep, it did. I can't even hear it aids now. <laughs> was there a ripple in your mustache, Dusty? Yes, there was. It went. Awesome, awesome. Yes. I I was back. I stood back from the computer. That's fine. It it, it, was, it was awesome. Next. Awesome. Good. Was there uh, also one? from uh, James? Um, I have to bring this one up as well. Is uh, is there a character that you find challenging to voice? Uh. Not an MLP particularly. Well, I, I find that the sort of Luna change is sometimes perplexing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because she sort of shifts, and so I'm not sure. Like, I'm sometimes she seems to be written older, sometimes younger. I don't know. It's, 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 Luna can be a little perplexing sometimes. Uh, but not really MLP. Uh, d- difficulty is really mostly when a character is just screamy, screamy, screamy pants. From beginning to end, yeah. I'm sure you hear this from a lot of actors. Yeah, it's really the only difficulty because you lose subtlety and eventually you will lose your voice. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing so, um, for example, for me, I think probably Dragon Ball Z was the hardest show I ever did because all it was was wall to wall screaming yeah. and fighting. Uh, yeah. I'm and, I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, so I just <laughs> love you. I just love you so much. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you. Go tanks. Thanks you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got one because my second in command character one was actually on a business trip right now is actually in Austin, Texas as of this merry moment and just sent me a message. He says, inspired by a visit to the Salt Lick here in Austin, Texas, amazing food that has completely rounded me for the night, which means he's got a big belly. Um, question to all, what's your favorite barbecue style? Saucy, dry rub, slow roast? What is it? Favorite barbecue. Are you asking me? Yeah. I'm frightened of barbecue. <gasps> what? I am. Well, I actually love the taste of barbecued fish, I suppose. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, but, but I'm frightened of barbecues themselves because to me, they never seem to get sufficiently cleaned. And, and there's goo on the lids of them. And, and they need to be cleaned. And, and they get a bit disgusting. And there's crusty bits. And, but the crusty <laughs> bits are delicious. <laughs> That's where the deliciousness is. The deliciousness is in the crusty bits. It is. <laughs> I get a bit psyched out by them. I'm a little, a little bit persnickety oh. about food. Oh, geez. Okay. Carbonated weirdness is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I like mine saucy, by the way. Oh, there you go. I like you saucy. I like okay. mine saucy. Saucy. I love, I love I like pork ribs. Yes. I'm a you pork like what? Pork, pork ribs. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Especially when my friend's dad makes it, he's a he's a genius or something. I don't know why you put them. So good. Cool. Genius pants. <laughs> Next. Uh, so this one is from Sergeant CM. Uh, hey Sarge. Sarge. Yes, Sarge. Uh, it's a question for Tabitha. What is your dream car? <gasps> dream car. My dream car is red. As long as it's red, it's dream. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what came in red. What? The Lee car. The Lee car? The, yeah, the Fiat Lee car. Remember that? Oh, It, it had yeah. like three cylinders and, and had about two horsepower. Yeah, they came in red. I'm revealing that I'm a bit of a girl because I have no clue about cars. Oh, no. Although I would love to have – I I read a little bit about the Tesla. Oh, uh, yeah. And they seem very sexy to me. You can sexy. change the battery. The battery, like you drive along, mm -hmm. and the battery will – there are these changing stations. They'll just give you a whole new one. Mm -hmm. So you pay 60 bucks. Yeah, but you have to um, come back and change the battery back out. Or they charge yeah. the whole deal. But yours is still yours. Yours is still I, yours. I, I think they have bugs to work out yeah. there, but I, I really like the idea of them. And basically, I like the idea of anything that's not using up stinky gasoline. Yeah, they make that. They make those here in uh, here in our area, right in Milpitas. Really? Yeah, yeah Mil Milpitas is like half an hour from here. Oh. So, yeah. The, uh, the factory is like right up there. So you see a well, lot of Teslas, you know, zipping spread. around around here. Nice. It's cool. <laughs> Ooh. So I remember this question was dodged before, mm -hmm. and I'm totally bringing it back. Uh -oh. uh, this one from Pink Pearl Apple. Uh, and question is, again, because I knew I, I, I was holding to this promise. Um, can, will you be able to do a voice of Nightmare Rarity? Uh, <laughs> I brought back. I am um, nightmare rarity. I would like everyone to be nice to me, please. And if someone could please get me a bucket of lace and a staple gun quickly, I would be very happy. I'm on my way. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Staple. What a staple gun! <laughs> That's very no. scary. Oh my goodness! <laughs> you wanted a nightmare. You're, you're gonna st you're gonna staple lace to my bum is what you're gonna do. I can feel it. I tell you what, <laughs> that gonna give me nightmares. <laughs> it isn't so anymore. Everything is done with staple guns, glue guns, glue guns, staple guns, and lace. We're done. And lace, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Next. Uh, where did I? Mm. Oh, sorry, one sec. So this one is from uh, Shadow Soul, Tabitha. What is your work environment like? Are there cookies? <laughs> <laughs> there are cookies, and generally speaking, they're in a bag at my side. Mm. And speaking of bags at my side, there's very often Nicole. 
and Ashley and Andrea and lots of other bags um, and uh, sundry menfolk. Uh, there are uh, floors of differing degrees of cleanliness. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh, there are sometimes windows, but more often there are not. Um, except for the window through which we see the directors mocking us and bossing us around. And, uh, yeah, uh, work environments are um, worky, but filled with us and therefore lovely. It is as fun as you make it. Precisely. Yeah. Prozactly. What? what? You know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> so this one is from uh, Matthias Pom uh, Pompeo. Pompeo? Uh, sorry if I can't say your last name right. Um. Uh, so Tabitha, is it hard to sing with Granny Smith's voice? Well, the good Lord will tell Granny to sail the ocean blue and the ocean here. The world will go through. You don't think that's beautiful? I think it's beautiful. It's awesome. Yes. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> that, that was amazing. Wow. Oh. We need albums. <laughs> <laughs> we need soundtracks is what we need. Get on it, Hasbro. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We've been begging so for soundtracks one. for seasons now. Seasons. <laughs> there needs to be one big, big album. Um. Uh. So this one is from Luke S. Uh. Question to Tabitha. Ah. Uh, what character in MLP, if any, would you want to voice act? Would I want to voice act? Yeah. You mean uh, one that you don't do? One that, one that I don't yeah, do. Let's, let's, one existing yeah. that belongs to someone else. Why well, don't want to take anybody else? Let's else's. not do that. Let's let's, let's rechange that question. Yeah. If you could come up with a new character if I for come up, My Little Pony, <laughs> what, what would it be? Um. Uh, what would it be if I could come up with a new character? Yeah. Uh, I well. I would like to be um, a, a fellow of Zakora's, uh, a character, uh, not Zakora, but a, also a woodsy, shaman-y kind of woo-woo person. You know, a crusty old bag with a big garden. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got my crusty horseshoe? <laughs> Who's got my crusty horseshoe? I'm having the cucumber. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh goodness! Next, next, uh, next. Um. Uh, so this one is from uh, jo Jova. I think that's how you say it. Um. Question for Tabitha: As a fan, as a fan of skunks and a fan of quote unquote bad jokes, can you yes. tell us the joke that Pepper would make? Uh, <laughs> um. Well, I don't know if you will understand this joke because. The equipment for it no longer exists, but this is my favorite childhood joke. Uh -huh. <clears throat> green, 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 yellow, brown number, pink, blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Do you get it? Yes. Get it? Yes. The blue is a dial tone, pink yes. is the hang up, yeah, brown. Oh, I love that. I love it. <laughs> Come on, Dusty, line up. That was awesome. <laughs> I, was, I said it was good. You know, I'm, I'm probably one of only... Me and me and Tabitha are the only ones in this room and probably in the chat room that have actually used a rotary dial phone. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I've they used my have... grandma's one before. It was fun. <laughs> they don't it have this dial tone you, 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 can't, you can't do this. Ooh. And have anybody know what the hell that means. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I know life what it means. It means it's a pain. It's when life is hard. <laughs> Takes forever. I know. My little mom used to phone me up, um, or I used to phone her, and they had a they had a phone on one of those windy windy cords oh, yeah. in the hall. Uh, but it was a, t a really short cord, like it was maybe like two feet when it was fully extended. So you call her up and I go, hey, mom, how are you doing? She goes, hello, Rosemary. No, it's your other daughter. Oh, hello. Uh, you know, Hugh's burned his bald spot. And there's, there's uh, Mrs. McGilvery down the street. She's got those enormous calves. I'm not quite, 
uh, it, uh, who is this? And I'd say it's your daughter. Oh, Rosemary. No, it's the other one. Oh, eh. and then you hear because <laughs> the phone had fallen off the cord, and and <laughs> and then just be all this kerfuffle as she picks it up, and then she'd be like, uh, uh, hello. Uh, who is this? <laughs> it's your daughter, Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah, it yeah. oh. is funny. The telephone table. Never forget it. Yeah. That's like you can't you can't make a phone booth joke anymore. It's like they don't exist. Uh no! I saw a movie that had a phone booth in it, and I was like, "What? Really?" What? Gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think I know. I think I know. Who it is Doctor Who. Doctor, uh, mm, that's a police. That's a police call. booth. Oh, that's a police. Wait, you know what? Uh, even more obscure for us. It is never, a, yeah. I, I, I'm just gonna be quiet. <laughs> that's all right. Can you imagine if we had police call booths? How crowded they would be in North America? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. All right. Question. Uh, questions. Concerns. Uh, is from uh, Chris Music's uh, question for you, Tabitha. Have you ever considered writing or directing for shows? Well, uh, I would love to. <laughs> uh, do both, actually. I would love to write. I would love to direct. I do write. I just uh, am busy doing other things, so I don't really, um, you know... I send short stories out. I've had short stories published online and stuff like that. And I actually did write a movie which was done in Mexico. Okay. How bizarre is that? With Imagination Films um, called, uh, gosh, it was just two years ago and I can't remember it all. Because uh, they changed the title on, on me. It was called At Liberty and now I think it's called Alley of Dreams. That's right. Um, which was fantastic uh, World War II story, two boys that get sent to New York to get away from the danger in England mm -hmm. and then uh, end up running with a gang of street kids because they, um, they're abducted by a nasty orphanage, a woman who runs an orphanage and is actually running a, uh, an ammunition factory to arm Hitler. <laughs> I know it's really, but it was it was so fun and so cool and uh, yeah, so uh, that um, I have no idea what the animation ended up like or, uh, but I saw something online of it being distributed. Anyway, so that's the one and only film that I've had that's gone into production and, and distribution. But I've written tons and uh, a lot of radio plays and had some of those produced. But uh, and I would love to direct because. Um, I don't know. I think it would just be a fun thing to do to see if all the things that I know as an actor I'd be able to translate. And I don't rightly know because I haven't tried. Mm -hmm. So, But there are things that just like, I'm like, oh, just, you know, tell them to do more. Oh, you know, I, I'll sit there and I'll burn up with all of the knowledge and not mm -hmm. um, not have tried that. I'd really like to try that. It's on my bucket list. You should write a book. Uh, how yes. How to act. How to act. How, how oh, to do voice acting. That I don't actually know. That's something I do completely instinctually. Hmm. I, I did study to be an actor in theater, and I went through all of that rigmarole. But uh, I don't know. You just show up, and then you see what happens when you open your mouth. Wow. That's what I... <laughs> Wonderful work if you can get it. Uh, yeah. Well, that's why, I mean, when people ask me, I say, I refer them to... Um, my friend Ellie Ray Hennessy, who's a really fantastic uh, voice actor, working voice actor, and who also has broken it down and has thought about how she does things. Mm -hmm. And I find, you know, when I get my mind into the how you do things, and I remove myself from the do from the ability to do it, I just start to think, and it's a different gear. Yes. It's the same thing as if when you write and when you edit, they're completely, completely different gears. Mm -hmm. And I love to do both, but uh, it's hard to, yeah, it's it's hard, it's not, editing is not creative in the same way. It's not staying in the flow, it's it's looking at from the outside. Mm -hmm. So basically you're swinging around 360 and you sort of schizophrenify yourself and you become someone else to do that job. And it's kind of the same thing with acting. Mm -hmm. Like I stay in the middle of myself when I act and if I went outside then I'd be a different person. I, I can... I can, yeah, I can jive that because cool. I was a better baseball player 
when I didn't think about it. I when bet. I, when I went out to right field and felt the game and knew where I had to be on the field, where I went up to the plate and didn't think about what pitch was coming, I, yeah. I didn't overthink it. I said, I'm just going to hit what the heck he throws at me. And yes. I normally would go on a tear for you know months at a time when I stopped thinking about it and just yeah. did it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can, I can see that whole thing. Particularly with cartoon, mm -hmm. with cartoons, because um, it's a, because you want to get to the place that is really like the bubbles on the water, the froth. Mm -hmm. You kind of want to keep a giggle going and ride the giggle. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and and that's when it just gets hilarious and takes off. But then you know, there's I mean, the practicalities of that are difficult. I mean, you often get a lot of stops and starts and whatever. Mm -hmm. But when you can. But when you can get that that uh, ride the silly wave, you know you've got gold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, some text messages. Jeez. Text messages. Uh, wow. Oh, leave me alone. Um. Uh, so this one is from Princess Luna. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. What? Something's not right here. <laughs> Something's not right. I am. Um, what does Princess Luna want to know? A um, uh, question for you, Tapathy, is what is your favorite Luna line? My favorite line. Uh, favorite Luna line. Favorite Luna line. Favorite Luna line. What is this fun? I think that's my favorite Luna line. <laughs> that's cool. What is this fun? We want to experience more of it. Mm-hmm. Yes. I like that. I like the... Uh, I like the uh, Viking village sound of that. <laughs> yes. I, I, I love that. I love going to... I love dressing up as Viking and going to Renaissance fairs and throwing axes and, and all of that. It's all of that. Oh, fun. goodness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> People don't know that about me. I'm a, I'm a Viking berserker in, yeah. in another life. True. <laughs> Is that who the, the berserkers were? Were they Vikings? They were I don't Norse. Know. Oh, they were. I, I yeah. I have, I have a, a thing in my craw about you know calling people Vikings because Viking was a verb. To go a Viking was actually to go raiding. A what Viking, was it? And yes, Norsemen, the Norse or the Finnish or or anybody who was in that area or grew, uh, you know lived in that area of the world were basically called Vikings. But they, there were a lot of people that didn't go a Viking that they called Vikings, but were actually just Norsemen. So it's it, I did a lot of history, yeah, okay. history of enactment in in Norse mythology. So it's just cool. one of the things I've been into. Cool. Yes. Wow. Next. Uh, so this one is from City and Lyra. Um, question to tap that: Have you ever seen the Pony Music video called "Children of the Night"? It just came out. You really need to see that. It's really good. Um, look, it up, look it up on YouTube. It's called Children of the Night, and it's basically a Luna yeah. Celestia mythology story. And cool. it's actually completely animated by fans, and it's really, 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 good. really, really <laughs> well <laughs> really done. <laughs> really, really well done. Like, huh? yeah. So check that out. My jaw drops. <laughs> oh, I wrote it down. Okay. Cool. Next. <laughs> Not much Hooked time up. left, man. Make it good. Uh, last one? No, no. We got five minutes, so make it make the next few good. <laughs> usually, usually you warn me ahead of time. <laughs> um, uh, uh, this one's from DJ Cloud. Uh, DJ Cloud Ziff. Z -Z 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 I, I know you're gonna. I know you're gonna try to attempt this. Ziff fire or something like that. But yeah. um, question for Tabitha. A uh, question is, what is your favorite food? My favorite food? Yeah. Yeah. I like lettuce. Lettuce. <laughs> lettuce spray. I like fish tacos. Fish tacos. Shrimp tacos. Mm. Uh, I like all kinds of lettuces. I like chicken soup. Chicken soup. I like um anything berries. Mm. Berries. Well, like fresh berry. I like fresh berries. Mm -hmm. I like good food that's healthy that's fresh that's not from a can that's not from a bag that you just made nice and i like strawberries strawberries and 
I like making weird blender drinks. Nice. And it's surprising how you can combine fruits and vegetables. Because I didn't know this because I used to be macrobiotic or macro neurotic. And they used to tell you that you're not supposed to combine fruits and vegetables um, because it's two dis- different enzymes apparently that digest them. Mm-hmm. But ah. it's juicing um, mixes of fruits and vegetables. And it's pretty awesome. Cool. I like it. Autumn. I like it. Screwy? I want a smoothie now. Yeah, I want a smoothie too. Please. Screwy. Yeah. We're at it, buddy. Make me one good last question. <sighs> this one I've been saving for since a long time. Um, so this one is from Imperius. Not a question, but more of a comment and a humble request. His birthday was on June 22nd, which makes him 29 years of age, which makes him a cancer, which also actually makes Luna, uh, makes, also makes his planetary ruler of the moon, which makes Luna literally his princess. <laughs> and he would be ever so humbled and honored if he could get a birthday wish a, a belated birthday wish from his princess Luna. Your faithful and humble subject, Imperius. Um, <clears throat> Imperius. It falls upon us that deal with the night to understand the unconscious and to bring it to the light. To be fearless and proud. Imperius, go forth. Bless the world of light with all of you know. Of the night. <laughs> I love that. Wow. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Awesome. I did what I just said. That's awesome. <laughs> and, and with that, people, we're at the end of the show, so we get to do the weekly call out sheet of all the wonderful original programming that you can come back here and watch all week long here on the Free Network. You start on Mondays with this very show every other week. Stay brony, my friends. And then. Yes, QDR Crusaders is Tuesdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, where the CAC find the best art this fandom has to offer and tells you all about why it is so good. Then, KPNY comes on uh, Wednesdays. That is 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, where the ponies have figured out brony fandom and are trying to figure us out. It's a radio play. It's pretty cool. Um, Equestrian Inquirer, Wednesdays bi-weekly, every other week. We're on, they're off, they're on, we're off. And that is 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. And that is the source of truth in Equestria, straight from the desk <laughs> of the Equestrian Inquirer. Into the Spotlight with Osaka Jack, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Focuses on the person behind the brony. That He goes and finds all the awesome people doing really great stuff that don't quite get the spotlight they deserve. Then, post my video with Jay Holler and B-Vids. That's Thursdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's the premier video animation showcase show. Interviews with guests, content, PMBs, all that really great stuff on that side. Brony Breakdown with Saber Spark and Paleo. Thursdays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Saber Spark and Paleo dive headfirst into the fandom. Everything that's gone on during that week. If they're not working on something else. But uh, we're all going to BronyCon, so it might not be a show this week. So check that out. Lunar Republic Takeover are Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, usually when there's not a con... Yes, Nightmare Moon herself takes over the stream of music and plays your requests all evening long. Mixology with DJ One Trick and DJ Midley, Saturdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, where these two DJs tear it up for you, so come and check it out. Eastern Sounds with Frozen Sound, Saturdays, 11 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, which is a two-hour live mix of brony dance music for European time zone and European flavor. So check that one out. Saturday Night Songs with Michelle Kreber, I believe, is on hiatus, but uh, it's usually Saturdays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, where the Kreber clan will bring you fun times when they're not out on the road doing fun stuff. Blue Screen Brony, Sundays, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. That's the guys help you find all the good games and avoid the bad games. So it's the gaming guys, and they're going to tell you everything that's going on in the gaming industry. Pegasisters Live, on Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Emily J. and her new partner, Tay, will bring you all the news from the show and the fandom from the female point of view. Sort of like the same thing we do here, but with that other side to it. And that is everything that you can look forward to this week on Everfree network and with that we're done and i want to thank i want to thank a lot of people i want to thank efn for giving me this wonderful platform to come and talk to you guys i want to thank cowboy dave 
for doing all the edits to make it look Nobody. so good. Yes, on the YouTube. Screwy for keeping all you guys in line. Nobody. My <laughs> wonderful, wonderful girlfriend, Amy, for helping me. Kara Dewin for being the back end of this whole thing. I couldn't do without him. Brony Fanfare for inviting me to their wonderful convention that I couldn't go to. I'm very sorry. Uh, BronyCon, which is coming up. Oh my god, we're going to have such a good time! And all of you for coming and watching me make a fool of myself every time I turn on that stinking camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, we're pretty much done. And I want to thank Tabitha. Thank you, dudes. Absolutely for coming out. Thank you. And on wonderful this very to talk to you. Wonderful, beautiful Princess Luna evening with the lights shining in the moon. So gracious. <laughs> We have Thanks, to do, every time every time we have you on the show, we're gonna have to have you late night. We just have to. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Sounds so, good to me. All right. Thank you much, everybody, for coming. And we're at BronyCon this week, so if you're at BronyCon, come up and say hello to me and Screwy. Love to see you. Love love to sign autographs. Love to find you know to meet our fans because you know hugs. without you hugs without you we wouldn't do it. And we'll be back in two weeks. At that time, I think I, I'm not really sure who we got yet. So. I'm, I'm going to do contacts. Contacts at BronyCon. I'm going to set up a bunch of stuff for the end of the year. You guys are going to be wonderful. We're going to have some wonderful guests come up at the end of the year. So just come on back in two weeks. I'm sure we'll have something for you. And with that, we're out. Peace. <laughs>